I see a CC button in the lower left corner. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I think I turned it off. Um, and I have a question. Yes. Um, my bar on my laptop, the very bottom bar is not away as it's still sitting there. Yeah. On, on the screen. So I can't see like the mute and all that stuff. And I, I can't see much of the typed words, the caption. Okay. Does anyone know how to get rid of that? You can go to full screen. Let's see. Hide meeting. Up on the view. Okay. I just, you should I, see a view. I just hit it on my, I think it was probably coming through from the screen share from my computer. Uh, is that better? Uh, I'm trying to, I am on full screen. I find the exit full screen. Oh, just keep on going though. Okay. So I, there's, there's always more to, more to learn about, uh, um, zoom, I guess. Try hitting escape. Nope. Doesn't work. Okay, so I uh, started to say, <clears throat> this is about my grandfather, Samson Samsonson Michaelbust, and Alice Dirt's daughter, uh, with uh, various last names, depending upon where her family lived over time. Um, and there's a, here's their wedding picture. Uh, we'll see that again. Okay. Not advancing. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, we're not going to spend much time on this, but this shows the family group sheet. Uh, so we see Samson with the, all the important dates, or at least some of the important dates in his life. Uh, Alice uh, with a number of important dates for her. And here we see her her father with most of his, his many names uh, showing up. Um, And just to give an overall timeline of of what we'll uh, what we'll talk about, uh, Samson was born in 1875, Alice in 1882. Samson first came to America in 1892, uh, and was naturalized in 1898. Then, uh, in the in the intervening years here, he went back to Norway, uh, started a small fishing business with his brother. Uh, he got married to Alice, and then the next day after they were married, they got on the boat and came back to uh, to America. Lived in Clinton, Iowa for a brief uh, period of time, but uh, they, this was the Iowa State Census. It shows him in Iowa in 1905, and the Minnesota State Census, which shows him in Minnesota in 1905. So somehow in 1905, he moved to Minnesota, uh, bought a farm, and then proceeded to start... Uh, raising children. So just to give a, a, a quick idea of uh, where they come from in Norway, uh, this is the uh, family search map of Norway, which you find uh, online, which I highly recommend. It's interactive and you can uh, click on counties here and uh, uh, it takes you directly to a page uh, that, that deals with, uh, with that county. So if you do that, the, the, uh, for Hordaland County, that's this is the place where they come from down here in Southwest Norway, uh, near Bergen. Uh, so you can bring up the map of the locality where they, uh, where they come from. And then uh, you can uh, zoom into the specific area uh, and you find the Michaelbust farm over here. And then right across the road is the Stulen farm, which, uh, also was pretty prominent in our family. Many of these farms were important in our family tree, but these are the two most important, the Michael Busk farm and the Stulen farm. Uh, that's just to remind us where we are. Uh, so, and I'm not gonna bore you with uh, tons of uh, these uh, church records, but uh, uh, I, I have some reason for each of the ones that I show you. 
Uh, and I'm not expecting that you're able to read all of this, but uh, Samson is, uh, he's in here someplace, and uh, we get an indication of who his uh, father and mother are, and then some people who were present at the, um, uh, at the baptism. So this is the record for birth and baptism. Um, and one of the reasons that I'm showing this is that when I first started getting interested in genealogy, this is one of the first things that I found. And so it was one of those really exciting moments when I found this and I found uh, my grandfather's name listed and I thought, boy, this is really great. So, uh, uh, so then uh, we have Alice, uh, who was born in 1882, and I'm showing her record. The main reason for that is that uh, this was a, a big surprise to me when I found I found her record and I confirmed pretty well it was her record because she had the right parents, it was the right year and all that kind of stuff. But it indicated that she was from the Haugland farm. Um, uh, and um, uh, that was a surprise to me. I didn't know that. Um, and that shows up again later. So so. This you know reinforces what we understand about uh, and names in Norway that they always take the name of the uh, farm where they're living, and uh, uh, she was born on this Haugland farm. They uh, pretty soon moved to several other places in Norway, and uh, so she ends up with uh, her. Her father ends up being uh, Yert uh, Yertsen uh, Freiheim. Uh, uh, something uh, Fjellenbull, and he kept all of all of his names from all of his farms, which he put on his uh, gravestone. Finally, when uh, <laughs> uh, when he died, or he did, I, somebody put him on. I guess he probably didn't do that. Um, so we're coming up to the uh, uh, first time that Samson uh, leaves and goes to America, and th the. Way that I know the timing, and I I've, I have never been able to find the ship records for when he came in 1892, but there's a church record. Uh, there's the Utflitta and Inflitta pages in in uh, some of the church records, which show uh, 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 Samson goes down to the to the church and says, "Okay, I'm going to America," and they they write it in. He's you know he's checked out. He's he's signed out of the church. Um, well, the really interesting thing about this one was that on the same page, uh, I, I found not only Samson, but also his sister, Sela. So he goes to America with his sister. And then uh, suddenly I find his uncle, Uncle Jens Stulen, uh, who has decided to go to America as well and with his entire family. So you know, uh, I, I love the transcribed pages that we get out of the church books but you never get all of the information. So if you go back to these original records, you can almost always learn a little bit more about, uh, about what's going on. Uh, so in this case, um, Sam uh, gets on the boat with Sela, Uncle Jens, who uh, interestingly, Uncle Jens owned the Stulen farm. So this wasn't a case where he was being pushed out because uh, uh, there wasn't enough farmland. He decided he was going to America. Uh, for whatever reason, and, and turn the farm over to the to the next uh, person in line in the family. Um, uh, so they they get to America, and uh, uh, they 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 uh, get to Clinton, Iowa. And you know I don't have a good record for how they end up in Iowa, but I'm pretty sure that it's that sort of usual pathway where they come in through Canada through Quebec, I think. Uh, come down through the Midwest, probably through Illinois, and then end up in 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 Iowa, where there's uh, large Norwegian uh, settlements. Uh, they probably found people that they knew, people from their own uh, part of Norway. Um, one of the people that I'm trying to get to come and speak to us is a guy named Arlen Twett, who uh, has a, a big three-volume set on the... Uh, Iowa to Norwegian uh, settlements. Uh, uh, so and, and, you know, talking about all of the little settlements throughout, particularly Eastern and Central Iowa, where all the Norwegians uh, ended up and, and lived. Um, 
I when, when I got in touch with him and, and invited him, he said, oh, he'd love to do it, but he's trying to finish volume four of, of his book on all the Iowans and all the Norwegians in Iowa. Um, uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get him and come and talk to us about this. But um, somehow uh, within a, a few years, in 1898, Samson is naturalized. He becomes a U.S. citizen, which you know, in our current situation in terms of uh, immigration, I, I, I still find this kind of remarkable. Here's the 16-year-old kid comes to America working on the farm and uh, goes down. I, I'm sure he had to go through some process, but he ends up at the courthouse in Clinton and is naturalized, uh, which is certainly great. Um, but uh, some about this time, uh, his his father died in Norway, and uh, Samson decides to go back to Norway, uh, uh, and lives with his mother on one of the smaller uh, uh, houses on the uh, Michael Bust farm. Uh, starts his fishing business with his brother, uh, but then uh, before very long. Uh, he uh, finds Alice. Here's Alice and Sam. Uh, and they get married in 1903. I just put a little bit of the church record on here. Um, there's Samson. Here's Alice. Uh, and uh, 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 gives an indication of uh, who their uh, uh, who their parents were, uh, when they were born. Um, and uh, who was who was also at the wedding along with them? And here you see Yert, Yertsen Fjellenbol, uh her father. Uh, uh, so they get on the boat, and uh, here I did find the uh, uh, the ship's manifest. Uh, they came over on the Teutonic in 1903, um, and again, and, and this was this was literally the first record that I found when I started getting interest in genealogy. I uh, found this New York Times website where you could, uh, and I don't know if it's still there, but you could you could look for, you could uh, ask for these kinds of records, uh, which I did, and lo and behold, uh, uh, this record showed up with my grandfather and Alice on it. Uh, but again, uh, along with uh, Sam and Alice, uh, there's uh, uh, a bunch of Stulans. Uh, this, this time it's his sister, Sella, who marries a, a guy named Tom Stulan. Uh, and they come, they're coming back over with all of their children. So, so uh, Sella got married in America, but then also went back to Norway for some reason, but then uh, came back with uh, Sam and Alice when they, they they got on the ship and sailed back to uh, to America, and uh, uh, again ended up in uh, uh, Clinton, Iowa. Uh, so back to where they were, but uh, uh, if you look at the Iowa census, which uh, Iowa for a long time did did a census every ten years, but it was on the five year uh, off from the, the federal census. So this was 1905, they did 1905, 1915. I think they did it up until about 1925. And um, uh, you find uh, Sam and Alice, Michael Bust here in, in 1905. So this is two years after they arrived. And there's uh, Signe, who's their first uh, child, my aunt Signe who was uh, born around this time. Uh, but again, here's Thomas Suland, uh, uh, Sella, uh, and, and some of their children. And I, I don't know exactly how they did the census in Iowa, but I suspect that it was one of those where they went door to door and wrote down names and so forth. So uh, uh, the Michael Busts and the Stulans either are living together or they're right next door to each other in Clinton. Uh, but then, uh, and presumably the Minnesota census in 1905 was done a little bit later than the Iowa census. 
Uh, and in the Minnesota 1905 census, we find now again, Sam and Alice and uh, Signe uh, living uh, in Minnesota. So uh, they, they actually, here, here's a picture of, uh, uh, a couple of pictures of the family. Uh, they, they actually owned uh, at different times, two different farms in Minnesota. They originally uh, found a farm and uh, uh, I'm gonna, let me see if I can, here we go. Um, it's, it's a little hard to see, but uh, over here in, in this quadrant, there's a plot for SS Michael Bust. So this is a property uh, plot in uh, uh, in uh, Rosedale. Uh, in Rosedale, Minnesota. Uh, so this was his his farm at that time. Uh, here we see uh, uh, this is uh, here. Here they are at their fiftieth anniversary. So this was done in. Uh, 1953, uh, and uh, again connects pretty directly to my interest in um, uh, in genealogy because my uncle in 1953 put together uh, a big uh, uh, family tree uh, on uh, dr uh, drafting paper, which everybody in the family inherited, and so uh, years after I got my version of it. I started studying it <clears throat> and got interested in trying to find out more about uh, the family and these ancestors. This is a pretty typical family picture in those days. Uh, uh, here's my dad sitting on the ground uh, along with Sam and Alice and another uncle, Uncle Art. He's the guy who did the family tree in 1953. Um, the other style of picture uh, that you find, and I, it, it, it probably I think fairly common for people, is the one where they stand in a line from shortest to tallest, and uh, uh, my dad was always the last one in line. He was the tallest one in the family, um, and this is uh, 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 Sam and, and Alice at their fiftieth anniversary. Uh, So that's that's uh, uh, as as you know it, it, the story goes on. Obviously, uh, uh, nearly everybody in this picture, besides Sam and Alice, who came over when they were kids, basically uh, ended up uh, in school. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I told somebody this. There's a family anecdote which I have no idea whether or not it's true, but I, I told it to somebody who said, "Well, you know, that just shows the value that." Uh, um, <laughs> these Norwegians put on on education. And that story is that um, many of the of the the kids went to Augustana College in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and uh, the the story was that Sam, who's a potato farmer in Minnesota, would drive up to the college with a truckload of potatoes to uh, pay the tuition. So that's the uh, that's the story of the uh, Michael Bust uh, migration from from Kvin Herod, Southwest Norway, to uh, first Iowa, and then finally to Minnesota, where they uh, raised a large family, which I think is not an uncommon story. I think that many of you probably have very similar stories. Uh, and uh, so I'd encourage you all to present them to us and uh, also to uh, think about putting them into a form for uh, Marie to include in our oh, Alexis is still having problems. So that gives us some time for sort of general discussion. Um, so, hey, so Joel, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm on ancestry and yes. some of the documents that you were showing are things that I found on ancestry or something similar. 
Is that where you were able to locate these or were there other links that might be beneficial for folks that are trying to find similar type of uh, information? That's yeah, that's a really good question. I, I did find most of them on Ancestry. And of course, the the value of Ancestry is that they own <laughs> just about every database in the in the world. Uh, but there are ways of getting to these these kinds of records independently. Um, uh, our speaker next month, I, I started to say earlier, uh, Eleanor Brinsko, I think will be able to give us more of a handle on on how to uh, track down some of these uh, these sources uh, outside of Ancestry. Uh, I think we probably all have kind of a love-hate relationship with, with Ancestry, uh, but uh, they, <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're, they're the 800-pound gorilla in, in um, uh, and, uh, uh, genealogy in America. One of the things that uh, I've uh, tried to do uh, in Ancestry, uh, they're, they're starting to get some of the uh, <coughs> Lutheran church records uh, digitized, uh, not nearly as comprehensively as in Norway, um, but uh, you can find some of them. I, and I've found a number of them, uh, uh, again, through Ancestry. They're... they're uh, uh, the connection to those records isn't isn't great, but but I've found people. Um, but there's one particular uh, ancestor uh, uh, that uh, uh, I know got on the boat. I I can I have the record of her coming and getting on the boat, and she's on the boat with a bunch of her children, and they get to America, and I can find most of the children, and I know you know they went to. Illinois, and they ended up going to Iowa, and you know, found them in a number of places, but I can't find uh, this particular ancestor. And so I was hoping to find it in church records, but they're just not really available. You just, uh, I, I went to the uh, Norwegian American Genealogy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, Dana used her resources to try to search these church records, and we, we couldn't find her. So you know, maybe she died on the boat. I don't know, uh, but uh, I, I, I haven't found a word about her in 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 the United States. Interesting. You know, it's interesting that you said that they changed the name, and so they kept on one of your ancestors. Um, pardon me, I've forgotten the name, but. Yeah, and my great grandmother, I she has like four different names because where she was born, that farm, and then they she got married and moved to another farm, and then you know, um, there were I think she had three or four farm names, and and it was like a bouncing ball to follow. So I think that's interesting. I think the that's the hardest thing is to know if it's really the person you're looking for. No, that's that's exactly right, um, um, and I mean there's some pretty interesting wrinkles when you start trying to track uh, some of these people down. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned that my grandmother's father was Yert Yertsen. Well, uh, my grandmother's brother uh, was also Yert, so he was Yert Yertsen who we knew growing up as George, Uncle George. Uh, and I, actually, that was the first time that I heard of the Sons of Norway because uh, we were visiting my grandmother and we said, well, where's Uncle George? And she said, oh, he's down at the Sons of Norway with his cronies drinking and playing cards. <laughs> but um, anyway, you know, I, I started, I tried to track him down in Norway. Well, it turned out that uh, the family had another son named Yert, <laughs> which was not uncommon. <laughs> uh, and so what, every what, was the, what did you say the last name was? Uh, well, Yert Yertsen. Uh, okay. uh, but they, uh, yeah, I think at, the, at that point they were living in the Fjellenbol farm. That was where they ended up. Um, so every time I try to track down my uncle George Yert uh, Yertsen, 
I'd, I'd be stumbling over his brother, Yert. <laughs> Um, and that's a, that's a kind of a minor case. You're, you're, uh, Denise, you're absolutely right. I asked somebody one time, uh, just, uh, you know, how many Martha John's daughters are there in Norway? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a you know, great-grandmother, uh, and I kept finding Martha John's daughter, but it was never the right one. <laughs> I met a lady named uh, Annika, and... Um... I said, hey, I've seen um, the name before, Annika. And I was like, are you from Norway? And she said, well, Annika is like Mary in the United States. <laughs> is that true? Uh, Do you know the name? Yeah, yeah. In Norway, you mean? Yeah. They, yeah, I think that's a pretty common name. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. it's in Scandinavia. I have a friend who's Finnish and her name is Annika. So I it must just be a Scandinavian thing. Probably even the Swedes have stolen the name. I mean, there's a lot of Annas. Uh, uh, and, and so maybe if you're a parent, you want to give your daughter a name and make her a little different. You make her Annika. <laughs> and so put a lot of them. I don't know. Uh, and another thing on the map that you showed um, yeah. for your family, yes. the um, you showed a close-up of the map and you talked about a farm and it was named on the map. Yes. Is that typically how the small towns are named is by the a, a big farm there or something? Uh that yeah, I think that happened a lot. That uh um uh, you know, some of these small smaller communities, they're they're usually part of a larger community. Uh, but uh some of the smaller collections I think did uh come from the, the farm names. Okay, thanks. Uh, you mentioned that you couldn't find the ship records. Yes. I, I went down to the archives. This was many years ago and looked for ship records with my sister. We looked and looked and looked. We couldn't find our grandfather's emigration record. Finally, we found an employee and talked to him and he said, well, there was a fire and some of the records were burned. <laughs> So um, anyway, online, I found a record of, of their immigration through, through the immigration center. I forget if that, this was quite a few years ago, so I, I forget the details, but I also found the ship record through a, um, a website run by volunteers. It's called Solem, Swigum, and Ostheim. Oh, you heard oh. Of that? no, that, uh... Well, you know, it's transcribed records, and I found the family because I recognized the names, but there was a misspelling of my grandfather. So I had a really hard time finding records of my grandfather, but I found his family. And for some reason, they had listed his name as Lars instead of Hans. Uh -huh. And so I think, it, you know, handwritten records are sometimes hard to transcribe, and someone just made an error, but it had his father's name. And I looked for his father because they came together to America in 1869, the father's name was Christian. And I searched and searched for Christian. Finally, I discovered that his name was spelled with a K instead of a CH. And then I could find records of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'd be interested in knowing that the uh, link that you were talking about for ship records. There's well, as I said, it was quite a few years ago, so I don't know if it still exists, but it's Solem, S-O-L-E-M, Swigum and Ostheim. And the reason I, I have the name is because I did, um, you know, print out, I have a printed out page uh, yeah. of that ship record. And the interesting thing is this ship that they came on in the Wilson line was called the Echo. And it says, uh, we do not claim this information listed as to be the complete history of the ship. The information has to be collected from a multitude of sources and among them also secondary sources. But it does say that the echo, and it describes it, and the owners of the Wilson line, this is a very small print, and the length and the beam, and that says, and my, my uh, relatives came in, uh, I think it was May 1869. In October 1869, she was lost at sea during a severe gale in the North Sea. So they made it to America on that ship just a few months before it was lost at sea. Wow, wow, that's a good story. 
I had a lot of stories about that family because um, my grandfather's sister wrote some stories for her cousin who had a newspaper um, column called In the Good Old Days. Mm -hmm. And so she um, got um, the stories of their immigration from her aunt. The family had come, the father, Christian, his oldest son, Hans, and then three younger siblings came together and uh, with a uh, stepmother. So I have those stories from the newspaper uh, uh -huh. where they were printed. That would oh that would be interesting yeah. Well, I can read those. <laughs> I can read the first settlers in. Um, it's called. Uh, I I just pulled out my book here to to look at it. Uh, I'm not sure I can find the page now, but the the story was called the first settlers in in Maxfield County. So they were real pioneers. There were no other. Uh, neighbors, 10 miles in one direction, 10 miles in another direction to the nearest neighbors. Yeah. And in fact, when I looked up the town, when they had, I think their centennial uh, or maybe, I forget which um, anniversary, maybe 150 years of the town, uh, a few years ago, the very first words in the history that I found online were the name of my grandfather, Christian Hansen Ulster, who was the first European yeah. settler in this county. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, there's uh, there's another website that uh, some of you may uh, know about, but uh, it's I found it to be pretty useful, although I'm not sure that how well it's still being maintained. But it's called NorwayHeritage.com. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. About yes, I'm I'm looking at that now, and it has that um, Solem Swigum oh. index list. Uh huh. Oh. So they kind of took over from from that. Yeah, you can you can find it on immigrantships.net. Ah, okay. Um, but they they list the the index name and then it down right below it has a link to the norwayheritage.com. Mm. But that yeah, you, uh, they they list all these ships and when they sailed and when they arrived in New York and then you can yeah. go to the New York records and try to find the ship and find the, the manifest and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's quite a, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, it, it, I, what I found, I, and I think this is probably what happened in my case was I think there was a fire in Canada, the Canadian records for mm -hmm. a number of years were, were just lost and destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. See, there's a gap between 1852 and 1865. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it, it sounds to me like uh, a number of you uh, have some of these stories that we should be able to put together and, and give to Marie to uh, 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 keep some interest going in the in the newsletter there. And maybe uh, I can convince you to come and present to uh, to this group uh, in a in a couple of months. I hope. Uh, well, can I uh, interrupt and ask uh, a question with to Rick? Yes. Uh, Rick, I see your last name is Myra. Yes. Do you have any connection with the Spring Grove Myras that came out of Spring Grove, Minnesota? Or don't um. you? I'm not aware of Minnesota. It's it's okay. uh, Story City, Iowa is the uh, is the homestead of the of the Myras. So it's Iowa. There may have been a branch that went to Minnesota at some point, but I'm not aware of them. Okay. Well, if if, if, we, you, if, if you ever dig deeper, and uh, I'd love to connect with you because I have a lot of information about uh, some Myras from that area. Two different spellings, but. Uh, okay. What was the name of the town again? Uh, Spring Grove, Minnesota. It was really Spring one Grove. of the major um, centers as people moved in the uh, probably in the 1850s, 1860s, and of course many of them dribbled in over over the you know the next decades. And yeah. and then they spread out to you know to Iowa. I mean they moved from Wisconsin, Iowa, up to Minnesota, out to Dakotas, out to West Coast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as a general 
pattern of, of Norwegian migrations. Yeah, that would fit with my ancestor who came in 1845 to Wisconsin. And do you, know, uh, do you happen to know his name? Yes, uh, Eric with a K. Eric P. I think was his middle initial. Eric P. Myra. Okay. Yeah. There. There were. Yeah. I'd love to exchange notes with you later. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, I. Uh... I can see you'll both be interested in our speaker next month, Eleanor Brinsko, who's going to talk about uh, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, and uh, all those people that uh, got here. But I'm, I'm especially hopeful that we can get uh, this guy Twet uh, to come uh, because he's he I mean, he literally wrote the book on the Iowa settlements and you know, Story City is. Is right at the heart of, of all of that. Uh, yeah, I've got his. Uh, I've got on Amazon right now. His book set is available for uh, all three volumes. Yep, available for sale. How do you spell his name? T W E D T. Okay, thank you. Did he mention when he's coming out with the fourth book? Well. Um, he, he promised his wife that he'd finish it this summer. So then he'll be available to talk to us in the fall. <laughs> he, he has, I mean, it, it, he has a project on uh, central Iowa Norwegians. Uh, and I, I mean, I think he actively looks for more input to it. So yeah, maybe some of us uh, would have contributions to him about uh, uh, some of our ancestors who. Yeah, his, I could throw some stuff in there. <laughs> uh, you you mentioned Eastern Iowa also earlier. Yes. Or his books mainly on Central Iowa. Well, uh, I mean, East Central, I and mean, I guess uh, Rick, you probably have a better handle on this. But Story City, Liberty, uh, um, a lot of my it's family started. came from a place called Rose Grove, a very small part, uh, place in in Eastern Iowa. Uh, it wouldn't include north the northeast county, Alamaki County. That's where my great grandmother. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it would. I'm sure it would. Yeah, you think it would. Do you think I should get in touch with him? Uh, I I don't think it would hurt. How how do I do that? Um, I think I can. I'd have to uh, dig through my email, but I think I could send you his email address. Can you? Okay. It has a description of the books on. Uh on Goodreads and like volume one, it'll say it's about Story, Northern Polk and Southern Hamilton counties. Mm -hmm. So you probably look at the other two volumes and see if, uh, see if they have the county that you're interested in. My, uh, my mother's family came to that area and then um, moved around to a number of places. It ended up in Humboldt, Iowa, which is, uh, right you know north right in the middle of the state um but uh, uh it, it, these places are also close to minnesota that um uh, there's there's often a little other you know towns in minnesota where they kind of go back and forth so uh, the family spent a lot of time going back and forth to blue earth minnesota which is where my uh great-grandmother uh lived It's you know it's interesting in in uh, you know, looking for people. You know, this was a time when you know you find the local newspaper and uh, go through it, 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 <laughs> these papers are always full of little bits like uh, uh, Mary Johnson and her family uh, went to Blue Earth to spend the weekend with her mother uh, uh, Sarah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joel. Did yes still has relatives in Blue Earth. Oh, oh. They came up from Humboldt, Iowa. Oh, oh, oh wow. We're maybe related. We might be. <laughs> Both of those towns are on Highway 169 that goes from St. Paul, where I grew up, to Fort Dodge, where I was born. And both of those locations have Dairy Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
that was important as I, I judged the distance to grandma and grandpa's house by the nut, the dairy queens that we passed. <laughs> you know, uh, this is a little off topic, but uh, you know, uh, one of the cautionary tales about the stuff we do is listening to, I, I listened to my mother who told me all about uh, her family and, uh, and just about everything she told me turned out to have just the smallest grain of truth, but mostly <laughs> not. <laughs> and, yeah. So yeah. I, you know, I tried to track down my grandfather, who actually died in like 1932 when my mother was, I think, 17 or something like that. And uh, uh, she had told me that he uh, owned a restaurant, he owned a grocery store, and you know, all these things. And it it took me years to. Uh, track this down and I found out that he actually had a restaurant early in Rake, Iowa, where they lived for a while. And then they moved to Humboldt. And then years later, he moved to Gilbert, Iowa, and and started the grocery store, which is uh, what he had when, when he finally uh, died. So th her story was true. It just, uh, the, the time and place all kind of shifted around. <laughs> I just came across a, a letter that my father had translated many years ago. It's short. I just wondered if you'd like to hear the story of a Norwegian seaman. He's not a direct ancestor, but he was a cousin of my grandfather and how he came to want to live in America. Can sure. I read that? Sure. Okay. Letters from a Norwegian seaman. This is from a little book that I put together of, of my family history. And, um, my father collected some of these letters that had been written by his relatives in Norwegian, found someone to translate them. So this is from a cousin named Martin Austum. If you're from Minnesota, I don't know if you've seen that name, A-A-S-U-M-B. Um, <clears throat> Dear uncle, your welcome letter came to my hand first yesterday, and I thank you so much for writing. The reason I did not receive your letter sooner is that I left Buffalo almost one month ago and your letter was forwarded to me from there. It is with sympathy that I read of the passing of your wife and death. But when we reason it out, we must come to the conclusion that it is nature's way. This life is but a short sojourn and lucky are they who have fought the good fight and won the victory. Life goes from struggles to gladness, from strife to rest so that we may receive the crown of life for which we have struggled and which was established before the foundation of the world was laid. Well, that's all prelude. Then he says, I am for the time being in New York and plan on staying here until spring to begin with. Write soon and let me know how everything goes with you. Oh, this is the second letter, I'm sorry. <laughs> the one I was tr looking for was the one about, um, now maybe I've got the wrong page, The one I, where he was asking if, oh, here, maybe this is it. Um, he was asking if there was still some good land available because he had, had a shipwreck. I, I didn't remember that I'd had more than one letter, so it would take a little bit for me to find the other one. I started reading when I found the page with his name on it. Um, here, here it is. Uh, the reason I had not received your letter is that I went down to New York shortly after our ship sank, shipwreck. I came up here a couple of days ago to Buffalo. You no doubt were wondering why you had not heard from me for such a long time. I plan on returning to New York in a few days and remain there until spring. It will be a short tour. Uh, dear uncle, I'm becoming tired of sailing. I no longer have the lust for the sea, which I had when I was younger. My comrade that also was on the ship that went down last fall is of the same feeling. How is the land situation in your area? Is there any unclaimed land to be had? If so, do you believe a couple of healthy men with a few hundred dollars in their pockets could make it if they took land and settled down out there? So we know a lot of the young men were seamen, but they got tired of being at sea, especially after shipwreck. Um, and so they did end up in Minnesota. Yeah. What was the date? Yeah. Um, this is 1878. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Go ahead. I was going to guess you, you were reading from about 1900 ish. That's, that's um, well, my surprising. grandfather came in 1869. So the letters were written to him when he was in Minnesota. 
And then the cousin came after that last letter in 1878. We, uh, it, it, it reinforces uh, that uh, Norway really was a seafaring nation. Yeah. Uh, they all were sailors. And that's why, you know, we, we don't, we haven't talked about it very much, but it, you know, an interesting topic is the, uh, the Siemens uh, churches that were located all around the, the world. Well, they still have that in New York, don't they? I don't know if it's called that. I think there is one in New York. There used to be one in, in the yeah. Washington area, which I, I don't think is there anymore. Just just Google Siemens Norway and Siemens Church. You'll find out there. You'll find the locations all over the world. I'm sure they have them in Seattle. That's another big Norwegian area. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the pastor from the uh, Lutheran Church Siemens Mission in New York that came down to Washington once a month and had a service at a church I was at for a while in Washington, Grace mm -hmm. Lutheran. They moved that congregation to uh, Bethesda, to Emmanuel Lutheran. Interesting. So. Pretty uh, philosophical guy for for a seaman. He must have had I, a I lot of time. I was surprised about that first letter. I, I, you know, I read it by mistake, but yeah, um, he went on and on about the meaning of death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to welcome our uh, Norwegian contingent here. Uh, I don't know if she's willing to. Say hello. Um, Tona. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, I was muted. Yeah. Nice to nice to have you join us. Thank you. It's very nice to be with you. We uh and yeah, this is <laughs> this is off topic for all but uh, a couple of you, uh, but uh, um, I, uh, um, I have been going through the uh, uh, the book from Ode Pendergord, uh, which is uh, I, it's. Uh, I mean, I found a lot of things that I that I knew from other sources, like the Sinhordland Selector and things like that. But he really goes into so much more depth, and uh, uh, it's it's really interesting to to dig through it. I, I've, I've found names in maybe half of the chapters that I've looked at that. Uh, oh. Joel, I have a, uh, just a, a peripheral question. And uh, does anyone uh, use genealogy bank? I keep getting an, an I keep getting an email from them about every uh, every other day or so forth they brag about uh, uh, their volumes of newspapers that uh, uh, are available and this started uh, appearing on my email here uh, just a few months ago uh, that uh, i was just curious if anybody within the sound of my voice was um, has tried that site uh, for for searching i can't say i'm familiar with it anybody there uh there, there are there are some newspaper sites i think ancestry's bought up almost all of them but uh but you can still get to them independently usually uh, but i don't know that one mm -hmm. Well, I had never seen it before, and uh, and I haven't. I I'm not running into anyone that's ever uh, ever tried it. But uh, I'm to thinking to the point that uh, I might venture a short subscription to see um, see uh, what, what's really available on there. They uh, they make some pretty braggadocious statements about their their volumes of um, uh, newspapers that uh, uh, are not available, according to them, to almost any other place. I, it sounds somewhat unrealistic, but uh, anyway. But anyway. If, you, if you do sign up, I think we'd be interested in getting a report back. 
Okay. I think I think you can also go on to their uh, various newspaper websites that are databases and and see what states uh so that it'll give you a clue because i think they're pretty good on the east coast sometimes on the west coast sometimes it seems like the midwest gets uh or yeah sometimes there aren't as much in the midwest i was able to track some newspapers through the university of um, oslo going to their site um because i was looking for a specific event that my ancestor was involved in and so that was that was fun and somebody taught us on in this class to use the google translate so it worked very nicely uh, a lot of a lot of the norwegian newspapers you can find on uh in the the national library uh national bibliotech and, and i think a lot of them are available to even us without the norwegian uh, ip address <laughs> there is for those of you who are from uh, the midwest uh, northern iowa southeastern minnesota western wisconsin there's a winona newspaper archive that's on available that's on for you know free so you can do those same sort of searches by your name or the town that your relatives were in, but mostly by your name. You could just say God's country and then everybody would know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Tona, that you missed my uh, story about my grandfather, Samson. You could have uh, provided me all the corrections and got, gotten the story straightened out. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'll ever do a formal presentation, but I do have all these little stories. <laughs> I have not, another little story about my great grandmother who came to America in 1849. So that was also pretty early. Mm -hmm. and her story of her family is in a little um, local history book. And um, it's, a, it's a little paragraph about what happened to them on, on their way to where they settled. If, if you have time, can I read it, Joel? Sure. Okay, it's called, I uh, called it the Rima family arrives at Pink Creek. So this was after they got to America. The, the uh, author of this uh, little uh, local history book is Rudolf Grunlaug, G-H, whatever that Norwegian letter is with O with two dots on it, and L-I-D tells us, this family came with other settlers in a company riding on a Kubaro drawn by oxen. Does, has anyone heard that word, the type of wagon they called a kubaral? You can look it up on the internet. It's, mm -hmm. sort of, it's sort of like a covered wagon, but without the cover. Mm -hmm. But it was the Norwegian style. As they were crossing the Yellow River, the king bolt became loosened in the front axle, and the front wheels were pulled away from under the box, which landed in the water with its precious contents. The mm -hmm. box had not been made with the idea that it would be used for a boat, so the water soon found its way into it and soaked the clothing with which it was loaded. A pole was immediately cut and a hook was improvised on one end with which the box was drawn to shore. In order that the clothing should not be entirely ruined, everything was stretched over the nearby bushes and branches and thoroughly dried before the journey was continued. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Um... Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there were many things that happened to these uh, immigrants that you know just were never passed on. But that little story was. It's uh, yeah. If you think about it, especially in those days, that was a tough trip uh, to make it from the East Coast to the Midwest. <clears throat> yeah, so you had to be resourceful. The river, you know, crossing the rivers was very yeah. difficult. Yeah. I think that's where I get my resourcefulness is from my Norwegians. Yeah. <laughs> so this story is written in as part of a, a master's thesis paper. 
about the uh, immigrants. So the first group of permanent Norwegian settlers in Alamaki County arrived in 1850. So that was about the time my great grandmother came there. Hmm. Rhoda, did you say Paint Creek? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have. I've fought, I've tried to track some relatives through that area. No kidding. Yeah, well, we might be related because. Uh, yeah, and what and and the one fellow was uh, elder. Well. I wouldn't say he's elderly now from my perspective, but uh, he was 74 <laughs> in about 1850 uh -huh. and ma made the trip, but I think died um, in and is buried, I believe, in Paint Creek. Yeah. Well, I just read the story of my great grandmother, but she married, my great grandfather was a Scotsman named John Scott Bryson. He wrote a family history, which I have, and which I have uh, updated with uh, footnotes and so on, but this is his original family history. What is oh, it? Oh, uh, hold it up closer. Oh, okay. It's a history of the Scott and Bryson families. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Scottish history, but he also tells about his wife, who is Norwegian and has a picture in here of her. And uh, I, I took a little course on writing family history in Montgomery County here, and uh, the woman I showed this book to looked at the picture of my great grandmother. She said, I think I see a resemblance <laughs> uh, when she looked at me. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I never knew that great grandmother, but um, her name was uh, Tori in, in Norwegian, but I didn't know that for many years when I was trying to research her because she changed her name to Tilda. You know, she thought it sounded more um, American and her sisters all changed their names. There were three other sisters. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, my great grandfather, John Scott Bryson, not only wrote this book of his family, but he wrote the local history of Alamaki or of um, Alamaki. Mm -hmm. I, I, was it of the county? And anyway, he wrote, you know, several times local histories. So I have excerpts from mm -hmm. those as well. Mm -hmm. And he told how when his uh, brother-in-law scouted out the land for them to move to, the Bryson family was living in the East and they moved from place to place. They were um, weavers or worked in textile industries and the boys wanted to farm. So um, the young um, brother-in-law went out to Iowa and scoped out the land and the land that he found for them to move to, it said they still had the skeletons of the teepees and the smoke from their bonfires as the Indians had fled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were very early settlers there. Well, he was marrying up in the world then if he married a Norwegian woman out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he didn't speak Norwegian. She didn't speak Scottish, but um, they got. I she knew how to farm, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> well, oh, go ahead. No, I was just just remarking hard times. I think of my great grandmother who put quilts on the wall because the snow was coming in in the tiny cabin and the quilts froze to the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Mm -hmm. How they lived. I just happened to think, uh, Tona, the America did uh, daylight savings times a, a couple of weeks ago, so. I was wondering if maybe you didn't know that and our <laughs> you missed our uh, the beginning of the meeting. Yes, I, I I'm not following you now. The uh you just joined it. You just yeah. joined us here a few minutes ago? Yeah. Did, did you realize that it was you are an I mean, hour late? I did it again. Oh. <laughs> well, we had yes. we had daylight savings time two weeks ago. I don't know if Norway does that. We move our yeah, clocks. We, we, yeah, we move our clocks okay. tonight. Well, we did ours two weeks ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I thought maybe yeah. that was why. <laughs> oh, but I couldn't meet you anyway because I was in a party. Oh. I, I've just come home. Okay. Well, we, uh, we, we, 
We did record it, so you can go there. <laughs> yeah, I go there and, and look. See, see my story of Sam Michael Bust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for telling me. Mm -hmm. The, uh, um, let me uh, uh, just say that, uh, put in a little bit of a plug for the history group, which meets tomorrow. And uh, they're going to be talking about the, uh, what's called the Shetland bus, which was um, a number of uh, Norwegian fishermen who ran a shuttle between Norway and uh, Shetland uh, during World War II. It was a part of the uh, Norwegian resistance. Amazon.com. Um, and uh, so, and, and apparently there were uh, uh, some significant uh, uh, reprisals and, and things like that. So uh, that, that'll be the topic for tomorrow's uh, History Roundtable. Can you send us a, another link to that? Uh, sure, sure. I, you know, sometimes it takes me a while to find the links when they're sent earlier. Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of go back and forth between sending out reminders and not wanting to clutter up your inboxes with reminders. But uh, I have found that uh, I tend to lose the, these emails with links uh, in my inbox. And so yeah. <laughs> it takes me a while to find them sometimes. Thank you. Amazon. Okay, I think we're winding down a bit here. So, um, a, uh, again, and I'll send out the reminders, but um, next month we'll hear a little bit more about uh, Norwegian immig uh, immigrants in the uh, Midwest, in the Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa areas, um, and how uh, hopefully, uh, and uh, I mean, her uh, her business is genealogy, and so hopefully she's up on a lot of these sources that we've wondered about and can help us uh, identify the best way to find these people in America and then use that to backtrack to find out where they came from uh, in Norway if that's if that's uh, part of the uh, part of your your quest in this business. Um, and I will. Uh, uh, I will send out the uh, link for the uh, history roundtable again to to everybody. Joel, you mentioned Gilbert, Iowa. Is that Story County? Uh, uh, I think Gilbert is west of Story County. I, Rick, is that uh, uh, Gilbert? I it's think it's east of Des Moines, so it's more central. There's there's a Gilbert that's north of Ames, and kind of southwest of uh, Story City. Well, yeah, I think that's probably it. It's definitely in that area around Ames, Des Moines. It's it's kind of a one horse town. I mean, it's like yeah. two blocks long, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have I have. Uh, Rally's buried just outside of that town. It took me a while to find the the cemetery because it's it's like one one little block in, in farmland. There's not yeah. nothing around it. But I've been there. There were Story County, that area was there's a lot of Norwegians around. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's definitely a hotbed for uh, Norwegians in Iowa. Uh, were you saying something, Rick? You're on mute. I, no. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I was saying that Gilbert was only 1,200 people in the 2020 census, so it's pretty small. But it's <laughs> in Story County, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, good. I'm pretty sure it's not nearly that big now. <laughs> well, that was that was 2020, so it's pretty close.
All right. So write those family stories and uh, think about making presentations and send them to uh, send them to Marie. Or you can send them to me and I'll forward them on to Marie either, either way. Well, thank you. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> very, thank you. very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye now. Thanks.